Welcome to another beautiful day in Caesarea Martina. Um, Martina at the seashore of Israel. I'm uh, just 30 minutes or 40 minutes by car uh, from Tel Aviv and Haifa. That says another half an hour to the north. As you can see, right now I'm the only tourist here, which is a little bit sad. Not a little bit, it's a lot. We, there is a rumor that at the end of this month, September, tourists will arrive to Israel. Yes, until they will arrive, I won't believe it. This is the history of um, the city. There's so many things to see here. So many events happen happens here. Uh, but let's talk about the beginning. A small village with a small port because there's no, uh, no water source here. And it's called Stratons Tower. And later on, King Herod built the city here because he found a uh, water solution, like he built the aqueduct. And it started from 22 BC until 10 BC. And that's the festival started. Um, later on, the Romans that control Israel decided that that is the best Roman city stay and to rule Israel from and that's what they did and in that case spot to spill out as I believe was here as well. St. Paul for the Christian of us was arrested here for two years and from here he went to Rome because he was a Roman citizen to be judged there and that was the end of it. Another important thing that started here is the uh, first Jewish revolts against the Romans mainly because it was so difficult for the Jews to live here under control of the Romans and look at that, the Pagans majority uh, massacred 20,000 of the city Jews. That is really, really bad. Um, later on we had the second revolt. Uh, it's called Bar Kokhba revolt, but it might be more interesting for you, uh, well known for you by Adrian, Caesar Adrian, who uh, control Israel at that time and Rabbi Akiva, one of the most important rabbi and other leaders of the Jews, tortured and died here in Caesarea. At the beginning, Christianity wasn't um, well, a little religion then. They tortured a lot of them and Oregon is the, one of the most important fathers of Christianity. He wrote so many books about it, it translated the, the Bible as well to five different languages, and um, and then the, star, the, 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 the Christians became uh, sorry, the Romans convert themselves into Christianity and had some problems with the Samaritans, and then the Persians conquered the Islamic conquered the Byzantine came back and uh, built the city again and again. Uh, Arabs destroyed uh, the city and then the Crusader came and um, then the Arabs and then the Crusaders came again and th think about the French King Louis the IX um, mainly because he built the walls that we're gonna see later on and then the Muslims came you got the message let's see the model of the city and by that, I want you to understand that what you're going to see is only a small part of it. That's the harbor that King Herod built. And we will talk about it. But we are right here. Actually, we are right there. You can see um, the theater in front of you. And then some other places like the Palace of King Herod, the Pontus Pilate, and the other governments of the um, Romans use it. The amphitheater and the hippodrome, the horse race area, some rich villas. And another part uh, that covered with walls and that was used to be part of the Roman city. But the walls are Actually, most of them are Crusader walls, mainly because the Crusader didn't need that big part. What they wanted is the connection to the sea. Then the first wall that you see is the Roman wall, 
but the Byzantine city was much bigger than that. See, the second wall belongs to the Byzantine. That in that case, everything that you see here, or most of it, we didn't excavate yet. There's so many things to see and visit. Then, are we ready? Yes, we are. Uh, before we will reach those marble statues, let me tell you that uh, I will have, uh, you will have more information about Caesarea at the description and at the description of that video you will find ways to talk to me to connect me via Facebook via Instagram one thing that you must know from the beginning King Herod that built that city never used marble it was too expensive and he had to import it there's no marble in Israel. Usually when I actually look at that, uh, as a child, I imagined uh, how big was the statue. But now we found it just like that. It's actually a symbol of a certain doctor and I think you know exactly what kind of a doctor. Another important statue is about the God of Wine, Dionysus. And why it's so important? Because the theater patron is Genesis. You can see the grapes right here. Pure marble. And at the time of the Romans, the marble that you actually see wasn't white. They used to color it. But although there's so many beautiful marble statues here, the one that I like is that. Such a small one. But it looks like the Good Shepherd. Is that one of the first Christians uh, statues in uh, Caesarea? It might be, or maybe it's just, you know, the Good Shepherd. Let's go t through the Roman theater. <laughs> Oh, what I wanted to, yeah, it's going to be hot today, very hot, it's around 30 degrees, oh, look at that, I don't know if you can see it, the sun is in our eyes, can you see the lizard, mm -hmm. yeah, I can see it, I hope that you can see it too, then, we are now entering to the theater, that theater was built by King Herod. Remember the Roman wall that we saw at that model? Here it is. That was the end of the city at the Roman time. Immediately, here you can see that one third of the theater is gone. Then the theater that you will see was bigger than that one. Let's enter through the volatorium. What? It sounds like we are, you know, yes, it is. Think about what's happening to uh, at the end of the show. Everyone goes together and it looks exactly like, yes, you know. Look at the ancient mosaic. And Da, 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 da. We are the only one here in the theater. And you can hear me out of tune, but I don't mind because no one can see me now, except to me, of course. Around 4,000 seats were here. A theater is very important um, because of so many reasons. First of all, it's a symbol to a right. Um, I'm a Roman city. Then this is the first theater ever because uh, that city was the first Roman city in Israel, built by King Herod himself. Um, that was at the time of Augustus. And Augustus knew 
that if we will give the people bread and entertainment, they will be happy. And now they will be able to do whatever they want. That was his motto. And King Herod lived in his time. King Herod almost died in his time because at uh, 31 BC, um, Augustus had a huge fight between another Roman ruler, Antonius. And you know Antonius because Cleopatra. Cleopatra was his wife and King Herod was for them. And he lost. And King Herod knew that this might be his last uh, house on earth as a ruler and as a, as a person. Then he decided to do something that I'm not sure that um, everyone will be able to do that. He went to Rome and asked for his forgiveness. And Augustus knew immediately, oh, that crazy man is worth a lot. Let me use him just like he will use me. And he gave him even a bigger part to rule in Israel. And one of the first things that he did, he built himself, I mean, not built himself, he built for him a city by the name Caesarea, by his name. And he named um, the, the port of the city Sebastus by the name of Augustus. And he built a, a um, temple for Augustus and uh, the goddess Rome. Then in that case, he knew what he's doing. Smart people. We, we love to hate Herod. We know that Herod tried to kill the innocent children, but he was a genius. He built so many things. He built the Jewish temple. He built Herodion. He built Masada. He built so many places in, in Jordan of today, in Cyprus, that he knew what to do. Then, a little bit about, uh, about the theater. Most of the things that you see here is modern mainly because they turned uh, later on when they destroy, uh, the rulers destroy the temple, uh, they use it as a fortress. And um, the only original seats are at the first row and we will actually uh, um, go and visit it soon. Another thing that you can see here is a beautiful marble floor and you know already that the marble is not so well known at the time of King Herod and it wasn't. The Romans who control um, the city um, later on cover it with marble and then they could use their orchestra, that's the name of that uh, area, as part of the show. They can float it with water and a marine Bottles like the um, 301 bottle uh, can be shown here. Amazing, isn't it? Such a beautiful uh, place. And there, there's, they have the best uh, acoustic point at a stage. And suddenly, there's no one there to do something. I want them to sing for you. But... No one will sing a bit for us because I'm the only one. Um, let me walk down to the orchestra and I will sing you a song. No, I won't. Today, as you can see, we are using it as a, a theater, uh, mainly for music. Um, we do have a huge battle in Israel between the Sephardic Jews music and the Ashkenaz one. Sephardic um, uh, music is uh, uh, of, of um, Jews who came from Arabic country, many from Arabic countries, and it uh, sounds like the Americans tells me that it sounds like um, Arabic country music, and um, the Ashkenaz one, the rest of the Jews, um, they 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 have very uh, beautiful songs. Um, the the Svartics got amazing songs. They are controlling now the uh, pop music of Israel. Um, but uh, it's difficult to understand the lyrics. It's like um, someone uh, went to the computer and asked the computer to, well, to find some words for their song. 
one of them who sings like that is, at least he used to be the most important singer of Israel, and that is Shlomo Arzi. Maybe uh, I might uh, add the link for Shlomo Arzi YouTube channel, then you will hear what I'm talking about. I love Shlomo Arzi. But you know what? He has a little bit. Um, his lyrics is a little bit strange for me. Remember, the most important part of that theater is the sits in the front. And what you can see here uh, are the original sits. I believe that King Herod and maybe later on Pontius Pilate used those sits. Oh, the crown says yes, 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 he did, he did. Um, another important thing that you must know is that a theater is not only a theater, it's mainly a temple. That's why when the Romans uh, to convert themselves into Christianity, the theater wasn't the best place for them. Look how beautiful it is. And you can hear me singing. And I'm not good with it. The scan of phones was here, uh, which is the backstage. Although, if you will turn down that black curtain, you will be able to see the sea. At the time of the Romans, the build here is kind of false because of the acoustic. Ah, oh, beautiful. It is. Let me see if we can walk down to the low part of the stage to see where the artists were. It's usually closed, but now it's not usually time. All right, you can see here the list of the songs of um, someone. Let me see. Maybe there's a list here. I don't know what it is. But it sounds like, um, hmm? I don't know. I um, took a video of the list of the songs. And I will try to look for it later on. Can you feel the tension of the artist now? The crowd is already there, shouting, waiting for them to enter. More than life, more than life. I thought I would be able to go out from the other side, but no. Or well, at least let me see if it's, now it's close. Then we will have to go all the way. Are you ready? Yes. Think about your best singer. And he is now climbing with you to the stage. And you can hear the audience. That was that waited for so long for it. Uh, you can hear a clapping and shouting. Yay! Yay! Yes, I'm strange. I know. But that's, that's happened because for the last one and a half year, I'm not working. There are no tourists. Mm. I saw two ladies. Looks like one of them is another tour guide. Maybe she's doing the same thing as I'm doing. Oh, maybe she is um, uh, just guiding someone. You know what? Let's hope that that's what actually happened to her. Now let's talk about the stones. It's gray. It's sandstone. Boring. But it wasn't like that. When King Herod built it, he covered it with plaster. And you can see the plaster around you, all over, and then he was he painted on it. 
that nothing was grey, my friend. Nothing was grey. That's the main artist. Oh no, sorry. The government and the, uh, actually that side, then maybe Pontus Pilate or King Herod used it as well. Okay. <laughs> she was a, a tour guide, and next to her, it was her mother. Backstage, still part of the theater, and what's that? It looks like another theater. We don't know. Maybe it was a temple. Maybe it was a temple that connected to the theater, which was a temple. Or maybe the VIP here had some parties with wine and good food. Choose whatever you want. In that archaeological part, park, you will see so many things from the scanophones. Uh, what is the scanophones? Let me show it to you. If that is the theater that you saw, this is the scanner, which is the stage and the backstage. It was covered against the sun. Beautiful, isn't it? And that is the black curtain that you see there. Without it, you could see the sea, which is beautiful, but you will hear the waves and the acoustic will be so-so. A lot of the scanophones are made in with marble, which tells, which tells us that it's not from the time of King Herod. There are a few things that I want you to see. Columns. You can find so many columns in the Greek and the, um, Roman places. That's what's happened when you're doing it with sandstone, the local stone. That's what will happen if you actually build it with marble. See the difference? But that one is more is more important for me. Remember, until the fourth century, you couldn't say that you are a Christian. It was a non-legal <coughs> religion. But look at that. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. It might be one of the first Christian capitals in Israel and Caesarea. <coughs> oh, sorry. I'm talking a lot. And about that, um, some people actually uh, don't like me talking. Then there are more options of someone else who's doing actually create excellent videos and he doesn't talk. But that's what I love. It's like 30 degrees now. And, and what? And if I won't talk, I will die. <laughs> All right, then, sarcophagus, which is which are tombs. You can see the differences between sandstone and marble. <coughs> you can see the two crosses here. And it's Greek. I mean. But let's talk about why Caesarea? I mean, King Herod could build Caesarea everywhere. He had just to kill people and then to build it. Uh, the best port was at Jaffa at that time, and Jaffa was here. But Jaffa was a big city. And as a big city, it was a little bit difficult for him to destroy it. That map shows you a few things. First of all, the location of Caesarea. This is Israel. And as you can see, it's a bridge between Africa, Asia, and Europe. Then if you wanted to conquer the world, you had to conquer Caesarea. You had to conquer Israel. 
because this is the bridge and the red point tells you where the marble came from and as you can see there's no marble in Israel at all um, Caesarea was um, um, for King Herod was a very important issue it was a very important issue because he wanted to impress Augustus. He built it for him. For him. And secondly, he knew that to earn money, you must move from Jerusalem, which is not on the highway, and move to the highway in Caesarea. And at the ancient time, when you took a boat from, let's say, Attica, Greek of today, to Alexandria, you had to do this through the seashore. And if you will build the best port ever in the middle of the way everyone will stop in your place smart isn't it and if you will build them theater amphitheater hippodrome places that they actually were looking for think about visiting Manhattan visiting Tel Aviv then they will want they will force the captain to stop and to dock in their place and the port was so so modern look at the granite you see different kinds of of uh, colors and look at the marble different kind of marble can you imagine how beautiful that city was now sadly I cannot go through there then I will have to make a run tour that we are at the end of the detour but you can see the welcome to the time track uh, in two places you can actually visit uh, air-conditioned places um, and you can watch a video of 10 minutes about the history of Caesarea a beautiful video then then don't miss it sadly it's closed because there are no tourists it's in I think six or seven different languages Uh, the last two years, because of the COVID, they renovated a lot and they excavated a lot. And I'm happy to tell you that, that there are new things here. But let's let's go to the viewpoint. For example, that concrete pavement here and there, and there, and here. And that's good because in winter time, when it rains here, it's, uh, it's muddy. Caesarea National Park, say cheese. All right, one picture, another pose. Yes, excellent. I will send you the pictures. I was supposed to go out from there, but you know what, at least there are no tourists and you will be able to enjoy it. Ah, Portomery Palace, but before it, let's listen to the waves. This is the Mediterranean Sea. And to the left, you can see the chimneys of the, one of the power stations, uh, electric power stations. And before you will ask me, no, it's not the nuclear one, mainly because that is a fault area. And that's what King, uh, King Herod didn't know, because his port, his harbor actually sank into the sea. And we're talking about that, if you like to dive, he will do snorkel. Through here, you can take special tools that will take you to the underground or undersea, actually, uh, level of Caesarea. Let's go to Praetorium, the palace. You can see actually two parts of it. That's the first one and that's the second one. It looks actually almost the same, but this is bigger. You can see that there's a kind of an atrium. Um, it's open space. And, um, and soon you will see why that one is so amazing. 
that I believe that King Herod built it, but I must tell you that some people believe that King Herod wasn't here or didn't live here. One of the reasons that I actually said is that King Herod was, he was afraid to be next to people. He didn't like people. Um, if you could go to Masada, you will see where he actually stayed. Then in that case, that is so close to the center of Caesarea. The theater, you can see a little bit of it here, there, and the Hippodrome, the horse race, and then the amphitheater was here as well, then it's too close for him. I believe that King Herod stayed here because he knew that from here he can control Israel in a better way. Um, the Romans needed too, then they actually moved their capital to here until the 5th century. That city was more important than Jerusalem for the Christians as well. Then, let's go to visit the, the palace. If King Herod didn't live here, then Pontus Pilate lived here for sure. <laughs> it's unbelievable, I'm the only one here. All right, two fishermen and one that actually works here. We will go to see later on what he's doing. And if he will be nice to us, he might tell me exactly what he's doing. Okay, that is not original. How did I know? Let me show you. Can you see the 1997? But that part is original. And you can see two levels of it. Mosaic and above it um, marble. Then that might be from the time of King Herod and that was different times. Remember the open space here and the rooms were there all over and it's such an important place for so many Jews and Christians. Let's start with the Christians here. Let's look at the inscription and <laughs> let me tell you the original is not here. The original is at the Israeli Museum and I'm sure that at least 60,000 of you actually watch my video about the Israeli uh, Museum. And if not, ask me via YouTube and I will send you the link. Can you understand at least one word here? Pilatus? Pontius Pilat? Ah, it is Tiberius Pontius Pilat. He built it for Tiberius. We don't know where is the temple, but maybe remember the other side of the, um, the theater? Maybe that was the, um, pal uh, the tem uh, temple that was built to Tiberius by Pontus Pilate. The, it used to be part of the seats. They used it as a, like a secondary use and someone was dancing on it and when they deal with it, they realize that the word Pontus Pilate is here. This is one of the two only evidence, archaeological evidence, of the existence of Pontus Pilate. Amazing! Then that's the first palace. Some believe that it was built not at the time of King Herod, maybe it was built a little bit later on. You can see the peristyle courtyard and remember columns and then rooms we will talk about those rooms later on but let's go to see the lower part of the palace are you still with me because it's gonna be a long video maybe later on I will cut it into pieces I mean uh, you, you will have a, um, a video of the theater a video of the palace here and so on and so on and we are reaching the lower part 
built by King Harold for sure. And guess what? Can you see it? Because it's the sun is in our eyes now. This is the private part. That part was for his friend, for the government, for the clocks. But King Harry was here for himself. And what he did, it was kind of an island, artificial island, and they built here a pool. Now you can say, all right, instead of enjoying the water of the Mediterranean Sea, he enjoyed um, a private pool. But no, this is not King Herod. King Herod built here a pool with fresh water. Part of the aqueduct that came from the other side. Rich is pool. Genius. What can I tell you? Genius. And if you want to see how beautiful it was, then look at the mosaic floor. Here, and let me it a little bit to there. It means that people used to sit around it. That's why the mosaic around is not the most beautiful one. And let's, let's think about cushions, mattresses. And that was the biggest table in that palace. Two stories building, I forgot to mention it. Amazing, isn't it? But it's not the end. Because we know that Rabbi Akiva will judge here we know that uh, Paul was jarred here and sat here in, uh, in such a prison. I don't know where the prison was, but that's where he was jarred. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. You can see that that part is totally not a private one. I mean, it's not like small rooms. Part of the Portomio out of the courtyard. Maybe prisoners were here. Maybe Paul was here in one of those rooms for a few years, two years. But the most important sentence of his is, I appeal unto Caesar from the book of Acts. Let's find a shady place. <laughs> I'm kidding, there's no shade at all. St. Paul was here, mainly because when he reached Jerusalem, after he converted himself to Christianity, he had a vision, he met Jesus himself, he actually wasn't uh, safe in, in uh, Jerusalem. The Jews, Pharisees, actually sent him to tell the first Christian, the first Jews who uh, kind of accepted Jesus not to do that and on the way to Damascus he had a vision he met Jesus and he became a Christian when he came to Jerusalem to pray at the temple the Jews didn't like it and although the uh, uh, um, the sentences against the Jews were so horrible um, they wanted to kill him I believe that he wasn't a very a guest of honor in Jerusalem from that moment. Then, before they killed him, um, he was sent here by the Romans to be judged by, um, by the Romans themselves, because only them can do that. Uh, they just couldn't do that. Um, it took uh, Jews from Jerusalem five days to reach that area and they started to talk about it and they didn't reach an agreement but uh, because some Paul say, I'm sorry, I'm appealed to the Caesar, I'm a, citizen, I'm a Roman citizen, I'm not a regular citizen, I'm not a regular uh, um, uh, Jew, then only he can judge me. He stayed here for two years and he met two of the rulers here uh, and he met Agrippas the first. Uh, the nephew of King Herod and they were talking maybe here I believe that it was here and it's not the only uh, story of um, uh, 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 that connected to Christianity now let's go to see the here the view Mausim Shama Shani Agid Lehem Tewa 
חשבתי שגילו איזה משהו. אולייט, תודה. זה רק על אלקטריסיטי. אני חושב שאתה תהיה הראשון שתראה שהם יראו משהו מיוחד. קצת מהפורט, אולי הפורט של הפורט, חלק מהם היו כתובים פה. אני חושב שהוא משתמש בזה כשהוא מבחינת את הפורט של הפורט. טורקי, קבדוקיה, אינטרסוס, ואני אקלי, כשהוא היה פה, הוא היה פה בבית של פיליפוס, האבנג'ליסט, ושני שלושה דודים. מישהו פה, אני לא יודע איפה. מישהו פה. מישהו פה. כשאתה יש לך זמן, אני עומד את הגרופה. אני עומד את הגרופה. to mingle with the sound of the water and to dip their legs here. But when you are reaching here, please don't swim there. There's no, uh, it's not a safe place. And if they're talking about a safe place, that is not a safe place too. This is the Hippodrome, horse race. Let's say 12,000 people used to sit there watching the view of the sea and see the horse race Shh, goes all the way to here the best seats were here why the best seats were here mainly because when they are doing the detail you turn some of them are falling blood 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 and if we're talking about blood let's talk about another uh, event that happened here from time to time and like Actually, um, at the second century, they built another horse race, a hippodrome, at, uh, the, um, let's say, one kilometer from here, even less, because this is the best real estate. Then they use it as a market, and they used to close it here and to turn it into a gladiator, um, and animal fights. And a lot of the Christians and the Jews that were ran against the Romans find their death here. To the doom. You can understand why the Christians uh, at the 4th century, the Byzantines, didn't use it as Hippodrome. Kind of a Colosseum because it's so many of their people died here. The most important place was there. And that's where Caesar used to uh, stay, King Herod, Pontus Pilate, you know, all the big, big, big one, the celebs, the government of the Roman government. And beneath it, and we will see it soon, you will see some holes or like windows. Um, that's where the horsemen used to bring their idols there to give them a little bit of luck. The one who didn't enjoy that luck is um, Agrippas, the first one. He was poisoned, as we believed, right there, and three days later he died. The Bible, the uh, book of Acts, actually mentioned that the worms ate his, ate his body immediately. And that was there too. So many stories about uh, Christianity. Another place that we don't know where actually happened, but as I believe it was on the upper part, because in the upper part, uh, you can find until today beautiful Roman mansions. And that is the house, that's where I believe the house of Cornelius was. We're well, going back to the book of Acts. And we know that Cornelius was a Roman government. He was, he controlled 100 soldiers. But he was like so many of the Romans at that time, he believed in the Jewish God. He gave a lot of uh, donation to the poor and he was a nice man. But he wasn't a Jew. What he actually saw or felt is that he met an angel who told him, don't worry, God actually will answer your prayers. And he told him, ask for for, um, let me see, maybe you can see it, uh, called uh, St. Peter, that was in Jaffa. It's a little bit difficult to see, it's only 40 kilometers from here, behind those skyscrapers, there's the city of Tel Aviv, and Jaffa is part of it, and he sent two 
servants who were believing in the Jewish God as well, and one Roman soldier to take um, St. Peter. Let's say goodbye to the palace of King Herod and Pontius Pilate. And let's move to the Hippodrome. Uh, I will talk about St. Peter later on. Mm. I reached already 45 minutes and it's only the beginning. We're entering to the Hippodrome, but on the way you will see something very beautiful. Hi. Look at that. Oh, shade. What's that? What's that? Lavatory. Toilets. At that time, the people who enjoyed the Hippodrome had to know to go to the toilet. A human being. But in that time, women and men used to sit, used to sit together. Uh, they had a long rest and no one saw their organ. Um, the toilet seat itself didn't survive. But you can see that it was deeper than that. And look at that tunnel. You know what's happened to the man when they're taking the number one? The last drop. Mm -hmm. Then the water. And the through here, like a small aqueduct. And takes everything out beneath the seats. To the sea. And about two days from now, as I believe, because it's the Feast of Sugat, which is eight days of vacation, that place will be a real hippodrome, horse races. And you will hear King Herod talking, uh, whatever, and the rest have been there once in my lifetime, and I swear to myself not to do that again. Too many people, which I miss now. Those are original sits. Original sets. What didn't actually left are the colors that used to be there, and they used to paint it a lot because of the sea. You don't see me now, but I'm sweating as hell. It's 30 degrees, around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and so humid. I'm sweating, but I'm happy. Chair race, the Meta Prima. Here, here, here they used to make the B2, the U-turn, and a lot of them fell and maybe died or hurt in the arena. Now, why the arena is full with sand? Because if I will fall and I will hurt myself and you will see my blood, then the best way to clean it is by that. And here it is, the sand, the next. Next race can begin now. You already you already know that this is not an original uh, painting, but we found something like that here. Uh, but it'd been destroyed because of the sun uh, and because of the humidity as well and the sea. Uh, but it looks like a marble. Remember, he had no marble. Then he painted on wet plaster with colors, and that's called fresco. And it looks like a marble thing. Let's go and find a shade. Pontus, are you there? Pilate, Agrippas, King Herod. Oh no, they're not here. Let's find herself a place to sit. But before that, if you're talking about animals, because you turn it into a uh, Colosseum, gladiator, and uh, animal fights, then you can see the tunnels that the animals actually went through. Um, the gate wasn't so, I mean, the wall, wasn't so high because most of the time it was used as a horse race then they used to put the net on top of it to avoid the 
animals to jump to the audience. And that, where well, they used to put their idols. But who is above them? <laughs> Pontus Pilate, King Herod, Agrippas, Pastus. <clears throat> Let's continue with the story of King of uh, St. Peter. That Cornelius asked St. Peter to come to here. I don't know what about you, but he was at the house of Simon the Tenor, uh, waiting for uh, his meal when he had the vision of the sack full with non-kosher animals and uh, the angel told him to butcher them and to eat. Um, with Peter, it's always three times. Then uh, he opened the door and he knew immediately that he's, he's gone. I mean, just like J uh, Jesus, they will crucify him too. But he didn't. The... Um, Servants and the soldier told him, Cornelius wants to meet you. He entered to his house in Caesarea, not before they he served the, the three at Simon and Tanner house. And then he came to here and Cornelius told him the same story. And before that, I forgot to mention that Cornelius told the same story for the servants. Then in that case, three times. And later on, St. Peter will tell it to the Jews that were so disappointed that he actually uh, um, turned a non-Jew into the new Judaism that called it now, we call it Christianity. Uh, he entered to his house and said, you know that Jews cannot mingle with non-Jewish. Uh, Non-Jewish, uh, it's usually the word for it is Gentiles. Then he cannot eat in their house, it's not a kosher house. Uh, um, it's not so easy to talk with. But Cornelius actually told him the story uh, about the angel who came here the th when he was praying here at the three o'clock and then and so on and so on and so on. And St. Peter, when, uh, when he, but, but he said, I felt something too because remember the sack full of animals tells me that maybe not only Jews can be part of that religion. And uh, and then he felt the Holy Spirit, uh, and the idea was um, um, the sin was almost like the Pentecost sin. In the Pentecost, Jesus, God told the Jews to spread this Christianity or this Judaism to the Jews. And this is where the first non-Jew was converted, like. Others, he was baptized by John, uh, by sorry, not by John, by Saint Peter. Here, Saint Peter was uh, stayed in his place for a few days, but for us, Caesarea is important because from right now you can convert without any problem, non-Jews, Gentiles into the new Judaism, which we know it as Christianity today. Amazing, isn't it? What I'm doing now is uh, the full tour, um, which means that I will have to go all the way back to the car later on. Usually I'm actually uh, saying goodbye here, going back to take the car and moving the car to the other gate. But I felt the spirit and um, I must take you through the old tour. That that is one good reason to stay with me, because I'm sweating us out. That what's that building is doing here? I mean, if we are talking about, uh, if we are talking about uh, hippodrome or horse race, the horse race or the amphitheater, then why there's a building here? Remember. When the Christians, when the Romans became Christians, they decided not to use it anymore. Then in that case, that was part of the market and part of the villas. Here you can see some other fresco that we found and sadly it's not here anymore of uh, animals. You can see any animals fight? Tiger? Ta -da -da. 
Am I the only one? Yes. Except of that woman that is making her teas about the amphitheater. I want to read it, but it will be ready. She will be ready in about a year, a few years from now. Welcome to a Roman villa. A palace, they call it. This is from the 6th century AD. Oh, the smell of it. Now oh, they're talking about the amphitheater. You can see part of it. I don't know if you could see the waves. The sea is very angry now. Although this is a cool day. Not cold, just cool. Look at the beautiful sky. At the beginning we thought that uh, that is a, this is a church. But then we realized that it's not. Before we will climb up to the upper part. Oh, look at that. A fisherman boat. Someone at the front say, I'm the king of the world. Beautiful, isn't it? The left part of that area, like that, that's how we found it. You can see there's so many layers. Archaeological section. Different times. That's from the 4th century and this is from the 3rd and 4th before BC. And that is from the 6th century and on and on and on and on. Looks like that. There's so many pottery here and you can find it by yourself. Here it is. They left it like that because they wanted you to understand what's happened here. Oops. That hat that you see here, it's called Sukkah. Uh, it's two days before Sukkot holiday. Sukkot was mentioned, by the way, at uh, the New Testament as well. And it reminds the Jews that there were 40 and 40 years in the desert, they used to sit in hats. Then Jews, until today, built so many like Sukkot uh, next to their house and live there, eat there, and even sleep there for eight days. And this year, there will be no rain. That's how Sukkah looks like. Let me take a picture of it. Here it is. Then the visitors can bring some uh, food, sit here and enjoy the environment of the holiday. We're going to climb from there to there, but before that, I want to show you the circus. Remember the horse race? It's supposed to begin from somewhere, and this is the circus. Sounds familiar to you? Here it is. A ah, family of five children is entering now. I can tell you that they are really just Jew. You will see the keeper soon as they are. 
because five children then that's where the race actually began and now that I will reach my house almost dead then we saw where it actually begins and you can see the hippodrome horse race and we are climbing up yeah I can see the keeper on her head I call it light light religious too father's got no keeper I will tell it to the mother and we are entering up two places of uh, Roman villas and Roman bath as well gosh it's hot I will stop soon to drink something <laughs> If that is part of the hot tub, look us. Changing room. I wish that I could jump now, not to the hot water. To cool the cool pool and the, in every Roman bath, you could find cool pool. Oh, more tourists. Marble. Look at Peter with this. If it's marble, you know already that it's not from the time of King Arab. A public bathhouse, which actually goes all the way to here. It's a huge one, one of the biggest. Looks like that. And you can find some beautiful mosaic floor animals there. Beautiful. I will pay a lot of money just to sit and put my legs in that fountain, which will not uh, use it anymore, which is not functioning. Beautiful. And left the appeal for the villa and the mosaic floor as well. Mm -hmm. Go a little bit far from the children. See now complaining there are people here. And look how beautiful it is. Part of the, I always say that this is part of the Roman bath, but someone mentioned that this is a villa and he's, he's no better than me. See the sewage canal there and there. And I'm gonna stay here forever because it's shade. There's a lot of shade here. Oh, I don't know if you can see it, the lizard there. They enjoy the heat. I'm not. Again, beautiful mosaic floor. And shops. Because what about shopping? We love shopping. That road might be the Cardo. The road goes from north, sorry, this is south, to north. Might be not, might be yes. But if that's the Cardo, it means that this is only half of the Roman city and another half is there. Now it's a parking place. 
It's a parking lot. As you can see, a Roman house. Attached to the car door. Might be, might be. Then we are walking on the main road. It might be not even the car door. The car door might be there. Because what we actually uh, see now is only 10% of Caesarea. Shops, 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 shops. And storerooms in front of you. From the Roman and Byzantine time, if that was the capital, people used to pay tax. Tax can be through um, money or through products. So many things here. I want to go to the public bathhouse. So hot, and this is on the beginning. Lot of inscriptions here. When people used to donate something for the public, they used to donate places, not money. It's like uh, in the hospital today, at least in Israel, they're donating wings, special places. Look how beautiful is that mosaic, that mosaic floor. Amazing. Although I know that city by heart. I was starting from yesterday, from 6 a.m. until 2 a.m. today. Because there are so many new things here. Okay, another Roman bath. Should I do that or not? Should I do that or not? Yes, I'm gonna do that. Oh, here it is. That's where the seats were. And the storerooms is in front of you. In some of them we found uh, the ration to Mitra, which was uh, the most important patron of the Roman soldier and so many people say that there is a connection between Jesus to them and we found here the 12 apostles as well uh, the 12 are at the Israeli Museum remember my video it's there oh gosh birds Shade. See, it was covered with plaster as well. And look at the floor. Roman and Byzantine time. And water with the sewage system. It's unbelievable. Such a beautiful place. That's the circus. Remember, we saw from the other side. And look how beautiful is the. This is the area, the Hippodrome. You can see the, the palace. And the theater is not so far away from the white um, tent. When we reach the other part, I will stop that part of the video because I need to rest a little bit and to drink at least two liters of water.
<laughs> Look at that mosaic floor. Full with animals. Financial powers to want to take care of the business here, the nation, taxes. Yeah, to walk with a big bag on you, not so easy. Oh, that's the one who dedicated to the Persian god Mitra. We're talking about the second century. And if you think that this one is from today, it's not. It's from, at least from uh, 800 years ago. And what about another bathhouse? Yeah, we want another one. Still no water. It's so sad. The Governor Palace bath from the Byzantine time bathhouse. Again, you can see the marble. Is that the end of the city? Not so, but I don't know if you remember at the model, you saw that the Hippodrome and uh, the Hippodrome at the theater was outside the walls. That a mansion that was built by uh, Louis the Nine, Saint Louis, who came to here with the Crusader. Um, at the 13th century and build that wall with a moat in one here the houses that you see on top of it were built by the Bosnian Bosnian uh, from Bosnia uh, Muslim Bosnia came uh, came to you when Bosnia uh, conquered by the Christians, they say to the Ottomans, we don't want to live in a Christian place, we want to live in a Muslim place, that the Turkish, the Ottomans, set them here. Sadly, by doing it, they destroy a lot of the evidence from the Crusader time, and uh, in 1948, a little bit before that, they realized that it's not a Muslim place anymore, then they actually left that place. The Crusader had three gates, and this is the southern one. Let's wait for them to go. Glacier. But the Crusader, they say, first of all, we don't need it. It's not important for us. What is important for us is the port. And that was the most important part. But at the time of King Herod, that was a very important site, and we will talk about it soon. Should I sit here and rest? No. Let's look at the map. We were here. We started from the theater. Oh, yeah. The sun doesn't help me a lot. We started from the theater. We saw the palace, Herod's palace. We saw the Hippodrome. And somewhere here, we climbed all the way up to see the 
Roman bath and the Roman villa. We went back through the toilet and the um, storerooms to here. And now we saw the wall from there. This is the Bosnian house. And we just entered here. We will talk about that beautiful wall. But the first thing that you can see is that when the Crusader built something, they built it with big stones. But St. Louis knew that there's so many enemies, Muslim enemies around, and he must protect himself immediately. Then he used the Muslim wall that used to be here and, uh, and built his wall here with small stones as quick as he could. And the crusader part will be in the next video. Now if it's okay by you, I must stop and rest a little bit. Then I will stop that video. And later on, uh, we will continue with that amazing part and more than that. Then see you in my next video. If you didn't, if you reach that point, it's like one hour and 16 minutes, write me a message. Tell me that you are the brave one, that you did it. And don't forget to subscribe my channel if you didn't do that until now. See you in my next video.